Estrada, we both uh, actually saw combat. And uh, for the lady that says that everybody who's got bullets in them and everything, you know, always is saying no, um, I have screws in my knees and I have bullet fragments in my back and I'm pro-gun. I'm a lifetime NRA member. There's a reason for it. I actually, while being in San Diego, was riding the bus. I had a concealed carry permit for California. There was a guy that came in and tried to abduct a young lady. I pulled my gun and pointed it at him. Two other citizens that did not have concealed carry permits pulled their guns as well. And I had the officer blame me for it, okay? For the same reason, because I knew they were gonna get in trouble, so I told them, nobody say anything, it's my fault, I pulled first. I saved her life and possibly the life of everybody else on there. Both, every representative here takes an oath. The police officer here takes an oath. I took an oath to protect all people from terrorism, foreign and domestic, okay? I believe that if you are allowing you know, gang members to run around amok, and you're telling me that as an uh, ex-military member with bullet fragments, IED fragments in my body, you're telling me that I can't carry a gun? Where's the justice in that? I'm a Say to the thugs that want to sell dope, you can't do it. They might have. And they know that some of the people that come to that address got pistols. And I got a rock. And so they slowly, reluctantly move from my house. I work every day. I won't say where. Those who know already know. <laughs> I see the feelings. I see the tragedies that don't get the hate. I see mothers, and I hear them say, oh Lord, why my child? Oh Lord, don't let it be the call that I dream. I don't cuddle thugs. I don't think that these little thugs have to be on the street to make money. You're 13. <laughs> Go to school. You don't need to make money. And the thugs making money are not taking it home. They're just doing thug stuff. I would encourage you, any elected official, sensible, fair, Good laws. Right. Because some will carry and some will concede that oh, no. we have to break them. I think a lot of points have already been made. I don't have too much to say other than, I mean, the wolves out there are overcoming the sheep. 
There are so many guns out there in the street already. It would be unfair to say for law-abiding citizens that want to legally carry guns that we shouldn't have. It. it would be very unfair to say that because the people that want to have them to do us an injustice are going to have them. And just like the Marine spoke earlier, he was able to protect and save someone else's life. If I saw something happening to anyone and I was legally able to carry a weapon, I would be inclined to do something about it, even if it risked my own life. But if you can't do anything because you're standing by watching someone else be assaulted, however, and someone has a gun, the police officers can't be everywhere all the time. They can't be. Yes. Well, the, qu the question was answered in the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court said that when they cited State v. Reed, where they said that concealed carry laws were held, concealed carry bans were held to be constitutional only because that state of Alabama had an open carry law. And they went on to say that whichever one, whichever one passes second becomes void. You can't have the absolute ban on carrying period, which is what Illinois has. So Illinois has a choice. It can be open or it can be concealed, but they have to allow something. And that's why we're in the federal court in front of the Illinois Supreme Court. That we're, you know, if the governor doesn't want to get on board, fine. We negotiated in good faith with a lot of groups this year. If we win in court, which we believe we're going to, the negotiations are over. We will reclaim our civil rights just like Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King That's reclaimed right. theirs. Right. I just want to say that, um, you want to say all right, the, the meeting is officially over. It's 8 o'clock. We have a few more people that want to say something. And I wanted Derek Smith, Representative Smith, to close us out with the final word. I just want to say one thing, with House Bill 148, once you all go ahead and pass that bill, institute in there some kind of uh, regulation on instructors. It, the, the way the bill is written, and because I've read it, it, it just says training, but you all have not put in there anything in regards to who can actually give the training, what kind of background they need to make sure once us law-abiding citizens go go to the training and get it, it's done right. How you doing? I'm, I'm Representative Derek Smith. Came a little late, but uh, we've heard, Representative Smith of the 10th District, we've heard what you said, and we're going to take heed to what you're saying, and we're going to consider that later on. So we want to just say uh, we thank you all for coming out. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming out. And you can always email me your um, response. If you're for or against, you can email Senator Collins, you can email Representative Turner and Representative uh, Smith and everyone. Thank you for attending.